Abraham, he lost his patience. Lost his patience. 11 years in. I mean, we're like, wow, he waited 11 years. And 11 years in, he lost his patience. What do you do when you lose your patience? What do you do when you lose your patience with your kids, with your family, with your friends? What do you do? Do you take matters into your own hand like Abraham did? Taking matters into his own hand. Well, we're going to get a kid one way or the other, right? When we lose our patience, are are we mean and, and hurtful? You know, I've had it up to here with you. I've had it up to here. I, I've just, I just don't have any more patience for you. So Abraham kind of repented. He, he became patient. He became patient. And he started trusting God once again. And he continued waiting. He had to wait 14 more years. 25 years in total, he waited. Waited for God's promise. And then his wife, Sarah, became pregnant and had a son whose name was Isaac. Now he's got two sons, right? Now he's got two. He's kind of in a difficulty because it's like, it's like God, God promised him a son and now he kind of like, he's got these two children, you know, that, that, that are each his descendants. Look what it says in Galatians 4.22 though. It says the scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freedom wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. Do we ever try to do that? A human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. Oh, I believe God's promised something in my life. I believe God wants to do something in my life, but he's not doing it quick enough, so I'm gonna take matters into my own hands and do it myself. Oh, you know, I believe God wants me to be in a relationship, but I don't wanna wait. I'm just gonna go jump into the first thing I can do. Oh, I believe God wants me to, to, to you know, go and do these things in life, but I don't have enough money to do it. So I'm just gonna just charge it all. I, I, I'm just gonna move forward with these things and I'm not gonna wait for God because I'm not patient. And this is what he says. So the son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment. God's own fulfillment of his promises. I've promised it and I'm going to fulfill it. Do we ever try to just take things into our own hands? I'm just done waiting on God. I'm done waiting on God. I waited on God and he didn't show up. He didn't do what he said, at least not on my timeline. So I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to do this myself. I'm tired of waiting for the relationship. I'm just going to do this myself. I'm tired of waiting for the healing. I'm tired of waiting for the job, for the promotion. I'm tired of waiting for for all these things to happen, and I've lost my patience. You know, we can't even wait for small things, can we? Not really. Not very good. Like, I got a question. This is an honest question, okay? I'm asking for a friend, of course, not for myself personally, but uh, how long, how long do we wait Okay, like, like you're at a stoplight. There's a car in front of you. How long do we wait after the light turns green before we beep the horn? Like, what's the standard here? Like, I don't know, one second? Is that too quick? Two seconds? Anybody two, two seconds? Anybody two seconds? Three seconds? Five seconds? Oh my goodness, that's like an eternity. That's like one, two, three, four. It's not getting any greener, buddy, you know? It's just there shining right at you. Just hit the gas, let's move on, put the phone away, let's get going here. Like what's, like, I don't know, five, five seconds, I mean, it seems like a long time to me, I don't know, I'm probably more two or three, somewhere in that vicinity like that. Why? Because I don't want to wait at the stoplight any longer than I have to. You ever order something and it never comes, man? It's like, or you order something and it takes longer than you expect, or, or God forbid you order something on Kickstarter, right? You ever do a Kickstarter? Kickstarter's like, well, you get to go and buy something that's not even made yet. They're like, hey, invest in this idea, and then we're going to send you the product in 28 years or something like that. It's like you're waiting for something. I got to be patient. But for some of us, this is more of a, a spiritual thing. How long do I keep praying for freedom from the addiction in my life before I actually get it? How much scripture do I need to read? How long do I need to read scripture regularly before, before I get the, 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 the breakthrough that I need in my life? How, how long do I have to give generously of my resources before God just blesses me with all that I could ever imagine? How, how long do I have to pray for the loved one who's far from God? How long do I have to do that before they actually come to faith? How long do I have to pray for restoration and, and healing? How long do I have to do that? How long? It's hard for us to wait for these things. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I just feel like giving up. 
just feel like giving up. Some of us, we have these thoughts in our mind, like I've been following Jesus for three months now and I don't feel like life is any better. And then other of us are like, I've been following Jesus for three years now and I don't feel like things are getting any better. And other of us are like, I've been following Jesus for three decades now and, and I feel like things are, are not just still going the way I want it to. How long do I have to wait? How long do I have to wait until I see the fulfillment of his promises? I don't have the patience to wait any longer. See, the irony is the very way that we learn patience is by waiting, right? It's frustrating. But the very way that we learn patience is by waiting. Several years ago, I uh, went, went to the amusement park with my kids and some friends. And, uh, you know, you're, you're just there and it's like always oh, just waiting in line, like waiting in line for a 30 second ride, you know, waiting in line for a 30 second ride. And we saw all these, these, People, they were older people, and they all had t-shirts on that said something like roller coaster club. We're like, wow. They're like, apparently there's it's a thing. They just travel all over and go on roller coasters. I'm like, wow, that sounds kind of fun. Like to be in a roller coaster club. You just travel around, you go on the roller coasters, and, and it's like you see these like people and they're like they wanted to get the front of the, the roller coaster to really get the full experience and all this stuff. And I said to my kids, like, you know, we should start a club of our own. We should start the line waiting club because it seems like we do a whole lot more of that than going on roller coasters. Like, like I pay a lot of money for this ticket and the majority of time in the park is not on the roller coasters, it's in the line. So we might as well enjoy it. We'll get t-shirts made up. We'll get merch. We'll like, we'll like hang out. We'll have like meetups where we just go and stand in line together and stuff like that. You know, well, I guess the idea, although somewhat comical, is why can't we enjoy the line waiting time instead of just looking forward to the ride? Like, why, why don't we just enjoy the process? Why don't we just enjoy being together sometimes? Why has it always got to be about the, the rise? See, we also need to realize, though, in our life as well, that, that, that patience and faith go hand in hand. See, why aren't we patient? Probably because we don't have faith in God. See, I can be patient when I have faith in God. But if I don't have faith that God is true to his word, that God loves me, that God is there for me, that God is gonna work things together for good, if I don't know that he's good, if I don't know that he's faithful, if I don't know that he's in control, then it's very easy for me to become impatient. The reverse is true as well. When I become impatient, I'm also demonstrating my lack of faith in God. See, that's really what it is. When I'm impatient, God, why isn't this happening? Why did you let this happen? Why do I have to wait? Why do I have to wait? Why do I have to wait? It's like he said, well, don't you trust me? Like Abraham, well, don't you trust me that, that if I said I'm going to do something, that I'm actually going to do it? And you don't have to go take matters in your own hands with your little servant girl. You don't have to do that because, because I'm good for my word. See, what we need is patience. What we need is faith and patience. And you know, it's patience and faith go hand in hand. They do. They go hand in hand. It says here in Hebrews 6, 12, we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. It says, imitate those. Imitate the people, the people like Abraham, whose faith and patience inherited what was promised. We need to be demonstrating faith and patience in our own lives. Are we demonstrating that? Are we experiencing faith and patience? See, Abraham waited 25 years for God to keep his promise. Do you want to receive God's promises? Do you want to receive God's blessings in your life? Well, Sometimes the great things come to those who wait. See, the patient ones are the ones who inherit God's promises. The patient ones are the ones who are blessed. See, God is not in a hurry. God is not in a hurry. He's very patient. And patience combined with faith allows us to receive God's promise. Like, yeah, 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 that all sounds well and good, but I still want it now. I want it all. I want it now. See, in your notes, God is using your journey to shape you. And we don't, we don't really like that that much. See, God is using the journey to shape you. See, God used Abraham's journey to shape him. See, for whatever reason, Abraham wasn't ready at that time. God used the journey. God used the journey. God needed to build some character in Abraham's life. Some, some character of, of trust and dependence and, 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 and honor and integrity and these things into Abraham's life. See, he had to leave it all first. He had to trust God so that God could build the nation that he wanted to build. See, God is using your journey. God is using your journey to shape you. And it's important for us to realize that God's timing is always perfect. 
See, we want our timing, but God's timing is perfect. His timing is the perfect. See, in your notes, God is shaping you while you're waiting. See, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait for anything. I want it and I want it now. And God's like, well, maybe that's not the, maybe that's not the purpose here. Maybe I'm working on you. I want you to be shaped into who I want you to be. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 25, but if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. Are we waiting patiently and confidently? Do you, is there something that you're looking forward to in the future that you don't already have? We need to sit back, wait patiently and confidently. See, God is still working even when it seems like he's not. You may be going through a situation, a difficulty, a hardship, a sickness, financial problem, relational problem. You may be going through something right now and you feel like God isn't working. Don't misunderstand this. God is still working. He's still working in the situation. He's still faithful. He is in the journey and God doesn't stop working while we are waiting. See, we're waiting and God's working. And, and we're like, but I want it to happen now. And God said, ah, just wait. We gotta wait upon the Lord. And we, get, we, we misunderstand God sometimes. We misunderstand him because in your notes, we may be concerned with an outcome, but God is concerned with character. See, I'm concerned with the outcome. I want what I want and I want it now. I want the job, I want the promotion, I want the, I want the relationship, I want the money, I want the this, the that, the house, the car, the whatever. I want this thing now. I want the, 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 the freedom and the healing and whatever. I want this now. And God's like, well, okay, you're concerned with the outcome, but I'm concerned with your character. And I want to build good character. I want you to be patient. I want you to have integrity. I want you to, to learn to trust me. See, I'm concerned with what I want, but God is concerned with what I learn with, while I'm waiting for what I want. See, can we learn while we're waiting? See, God is in the waiting. He's in the journey. It says in Philippians 1.6, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I love this verse. I'm gonna read it again and I'm certain, I'm certain, I'm positive, 100%, I'm sure, I'm certain that God who began the good work, you see, everyone in here, everyone hearing my voice right now, be clear about this, God has begun a work in your life. He's begun a work, he says, I am certain that the God who began this work in your life will continue the work until it's finished. When is it finished? On the day Christ Jesus returns. In other words, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna be in the journey. There's gonna be a lot of waiting. There's gonna be a lot of learning. There's gonna be a lot of growing. There's gonna be a lot of shaping. But God is in the journey. See, I don't know what you're facing right now in your life. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're waiting for. But let me be clear that God hasn't let you down. God hasn't abandoned you. So don't get discouraged if it's taking longer than you think. The situation you're facing may be taking a long time. And you say, oh, it shouldn't be taking this long. Don't get discouraged if it's taking longer than you think because God is in control. God is in control. See, God isn't done yet. He's faithful that when he began the work, he's faithful to complete the work. And you may think it's over. You may think God isn't making a, rule, a, a move yet, but these things take time. God is shaping you through the waiting. God is building courage and patience and endurance and steadfastness into your life. The timeline isn't a mistake. The timeline is there to shape you. It's part of the process. It's part of the whole journey. See, God is more concerned about building character in your life than just simply bringing an outcome into your life. And if we can trust him, trust him and say, yes, I will wait upon the Lord. He says, they that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. God will renew your strength when you're in a time of waiting. And you may feel like you've been waiting for so long, but keep holding on. Keep moving forward. God is in the waiting. He hasn't stopped working. He is working in the situation and he's working in your life to make you who he wants you to be. 